In this video, I'm going to show you one method of upgrading your soft modded Xbox's internal hard drive. So you just finished soft modding your Xbox and you want to be able to take full advantage of everything that it is capable of. Be that installing games, running homebrew, emulators, what have you. But you quickly realize the stock hard drive is just too small to achieve all of your dreams. Well, you're in luck. You can upgrade soft modded Xbox's internal hard drives and the process is mostly straightforward. So in this video, I'm going to take you through one method of how to do so. So let's go ahead and dive in. So to get started with upgrading your soft modded Xbox's internal hard drive, you are going to need a soft modded Xbox. So if you don't have one, I'll link you to my video on how to soft mod one using Rocky 5's USB method. But if your Xbox is already soft modded, you should be good to go. Next, you are going to need a replacement hard drive that is able to be locked. If you can't lock your drive, it will not work in a soft modded Xbox. So I will have a link in the description below to the Xbox hard drive compatibility chart. So this chart is awesome. It shows you a bunch of different drives and models and sizes that are compatible with the original Xbox, as well as their capability of locking or not locking. And this list is still being updated even today, so tons of entries for 2022. So whether you want to use SATA or IDE, this list should be able to help you out. So for example, I have a 2TB Western Digital Drive on hand today that I'm going to be doing this process with, and its serial number is WD20EZRZ. So if I type that into the search box for model numbers, press enter, I can see here that the drive is compatible. Now, if you are planning on using a SATA hard drive in your original Xbox, you will need some form of IDE to SATA adapter. The StarTech one that I have showing here is probably one of the better ones, especially if you are going to hard mod your system later. This one allows for UDMA5 for custom BIOS like Sir BIOS and Titan BIOS. But that's a little bit out of the scope of this video. But link to this will be in the description below. But if you have a generic one, that'll work as well. That's the kind I'm using on hand today. My StarTech is in another Xbox. And you will need a way to power your secondary drive while we clone it. So you can use an external power source or you can use a Molex Y splitter cable here. This is what I'm going to be using in today's example. So link to this will be in the description below as well. And one last thing to note, if you are using a SATA to IDE adapter, chances are you're going to need to upgrade to an 80 wire IDE cable. So I'll have a link in the description below to this as well. Now the last thing you're going to need for this method is to get Rocky 5's Xbox Soft Modding Tools Extra Disc. So you can download the ISO, link will be in the description below, and you can burn it straight to a disc. But from here, go ahead and get your Xbox turned on. Once your Xbox is finished booting up to the dashboard, just go ahead and get the Rocky 5 Extras disc inserted into the disk drive. So there it is up in the top right corner, so I'm just going to press start to launch the disc. Once the disc is booted, go down to the advanced menu and press A on enter menu. Now head down to advanced apps and press A. And we're going to install Chimp 261812. Install Chimp. And it says it's going to install it to e-applications. Yes. So just let it do its thing. Perfect, now that that's installed, we can go ahead and turn off the Xbox. Now from here, you're gonna need to get your Xbox disassembled. So there's six screws on the bottom you gotta take out, two under the label here, and then four under the feet pads. And you disassemble this with a Torx 20 screwdriver. We're not gonna go over how to completely take it apart because there's millions of millions of guides on how to do that. So we're just gonna make this quick and just jump right into the upgrade process. So, first thing, go ahead and disconnect the power cable from the back of your stock hard drive. And it can be friggin' pain. There we go. And connect it into your Molex power splitter. There we go. And now just go ahead and connect one end back into your stock hard drive. And now on your IDE to SATA adapter, you can plug the other end into the power cable for that. And there we go. Now, for the first step of this process, there should be a jumper pin on your IDE to SATA adapter. So here is mine on my generic IDE to SATA adapter. It's set in the master position right now, so I need to just change that over to the slave position. So there we go. Now it is in the slave position. And this will allow me to clone my master hard drive. 
and then I'm just going to go ahead and connect it up to my hard drive right there. And now this process will involve hot swapping the DVD drive's IDE cable out into this adapter. So you want to make sure that you have loosened up your IDE cable on the DVD drive a bit. That way you can quickly pull it out and move it over to your new drive. So now we are just going to go ahead and boot back into our Xbox and we're going to let it sit for a couple of minutes. And we can see here that the adapter is powering on with the red LED, so that's good. Good to know. Alright, but now that we've been sitting at the dashboard for a while, I'm just going to pop the IDE cable out of my DVD drive and put it into my SATA to IDE adapter for my secondary hard drive. And now on my dashboard, I'm going to go to my applications menu. And I'm going to load up Chimp Loader. And on this screen, it's going to say connect up my slave hard drive and press A, so I'm going to do that. Now when you get to your options screen, we're going to choose option 2 for soft modded Xbox. So you pick soft modded Xbox option, is this correct? Yes. And now you're going to get the disclaimer that whatever you happen to do now is your own dang fault, so go ahead and accept that. And we're going to make sure that our drive is being detected, so press A on option 1. So you'll see the master drive up there, and it'll say status locked, security level maximum, good. And then if your slave drive was detected correctly, you'll see the model number and the serial number, and then the status should be unlocked. Cool, so it is detecting my hard drive as we want. So from here, we're gonna go ahead and clone from master to slave. So option two, press A. And now we're going to choose option two, selective. Now it's gonna ask you which partitions you wanna clone. So from the stock Xbox hard drive, there's only going to be C and E that we need to worry about. So that is exactly what we need to have selected. So just press A. Now it's gonna ask you what you want to have your partition set up like. So there's a couple of different options available. You could do F occupies all available space or F and G split space evenly. So option four here is probably the safest option. So you can press X to select it and then press A to continue. But out of curiosity, I'm going to try and F occupies all available space for this box. Now just select yes to do the format. And then just bear with it while it does the cloning process. And once the copying process has completed, it's going to ask if you want to lock the slave hard drive. Select yes, otherwise it will not be usable. And then press A on OK. And now you can go ahead and press A on option 1 again, just to make sure everything is working correctly. So status locked, security level maximum, security level high, there we go. So everything is locked. Perfect. But now if desired, you could go into option 3 here and... Option three again, and it will show you all the partition information that you selected. So there we go, C, E, X, Y, Z, cache partitions. And then I chose to use F for all available space so I could see all of my two terabyte drives remaining space there. But with the cloning done, we could go ahead and turn off the Xbox. And now we're gonna go ahead and swap the positions of our drives here, so. I'm going to disconnect the IDE cable from my uh, IDE device here. And we need to plug it back into the DVD drive, otherwise the Xbox won't boot. So just get that put back in here. There we go. And I'm going to take the IDE cable out of my original hard drive here. I'm going to take the Y splitter off as well. We don't need this anymore. There we go. So now I'm going to connect just the straight Molex power cable and I'm going to try using the original 40 wire IDE cable just to see if it works because if it doesn't I'm not going to swap it out just to save uh, some headache on cable management. But now I'm going to boot the Xbox up, make sure that the new drive... Neep. We forgot something. Forgot something very important. Need to make sure that the jumper is set back on master, otherwise it won't boot. Jeez, the simplest thing sometimes, y'all. Okay, 
But now I'm going to go ahead and give this a boot and see if it works. Alright, so unfortunately it doesn't like that cable. That's fine. So, now I'm just going to go ahead and disconnect this old IDE cable from everything here. There you go. Take this hard drive out. We need to take the hard drive tray out. So, to take this tray out, you need to use a Torx 10 screwdriver. And there will be a screw right here to undo. And then for the DVD drive, there's a screw right here and a screw right here. And once you disconnect those, you can pop the DVD drive out as well. So just set these aside for a moment. Now we're just going to disconnect the old IDE cable. There we go. Now I'm just going to put in the 80 pin, 80 wire IDE cable. So I connected it to my DVD drive there real quick. So connect it to the Xbox's motherboard. And we'll kind of just let it flee, hang here for a second. So now I'm going to reattach the SATA connector there. And plug the IDE cable into that. And now we're just going to boot it to make sure everything works as intended. Oh, and it turns out I'm a genius and forgot to reconnect my DVD drive to the Xbox motherboard. Lovely. So, let me just plug that back in real quick. And let's see what we got. And there we go, now that I got it switched over to the 80 wire cable and actually have the DVD drive hooked up correctly, it has booted into XBMC for Gamers. And when I go in, I can see that my drive space for my F drive is that remaining two terabytes. My C and E drive are intact. Go over to my applications menu and see that everything that I've put on here is here, that's great. So everything is good. Everything is working as intended. So now I can go ahead and start filling this Xbox up with more homebrew applications as well as using DVD to Xbox to burn my physical collection of discs onto the internal drive. But now that we've confirmed that the new drive is working as intended, I'm just going to disconnect it from the Xbox there real quick. I can now swap out the original Xbox's hard drive in the tray for my new two terabyte one. So just using a Torx 10, you can undo these screws here. And there's my original eight gigabyte Xbox hard drive. So I'm gonna go ahead and store this someplace safe just in case something ever happens to this box. I still have my original hard drive. That way I can always recover it. But then just gonna put my, well, really should clean this but I just don't care enough right now but I'm just gonna put in my new two terabyte drive here and then we could just fasten that in place and there we go so now the fun task of cable managing this new IDE cable begins because a lot of these IDE cables did not take the original Xbox's form factor into mind and they might not be angled correctly so this is gonna be fun so I've gone ahead and gotten the Xbox reassembled up to this point, as well as reattaching the screws for the DVD drive and the hard drive trays. Now the biggest point of concern with this alternate IDE cable is this mounting point right here for the bottom screw. If you're not careful, you will accidentally route your IDE cable over it. And then when you try to reassemble the Xbox, chances are you're going to damage your cable and have to replace it. So I kind of have this weird fold going on. I don't like it, but it gets the job done for when I reassemble the box. Because again, this peg right here will totally damage it if you're not careful. So we just need to make sure that that is out of the way as we put the top lid back on and everything going well, there it is. 
Perfect. So now I can just go ahead and reassemble the shell and our soft mod hard drive com upgrade is now complete. And there you have it, one method of upgrading your soft modded Xbox's internal hard drive. So now this version 1.6 soft modded Xbox is just a two terabyte behemoth. As always, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope that you have found it informative and it helps you get your original Xbox soft mod projects where you wanna see them. But here at the end of the video, I do have a couple of big favors to ask. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to hit that like, dislike button, depending on how much you like today's tutorial, as well as that sub button notification bell so you can see when new videos go live on the channel. I have loads of content coming your way and I'd love to have each and every one of you along for the ride. For anyone interested in further helping support the channel and keeping it going, check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. A little goes a long way to keeping this place up and running and bringing all of this content to you. Big shout out to all of our current backers. Thank you so much for believing what we do here and helping us keep it going. You're such champions. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.